Hello rugby fans and welcome back to the channel. Today I have another episode of my Rugby Union Team Manager 3 series as the Bristol Bears and we are already up to part 6 of season 2. So far it's been a much improved season. We started off the season incredibly well. Unfortunately, we had a period where lots of players were missing for international duty, which is where we lost a couple of games. But in the last episode, we bounced back. We beat the Northampton Saints and we are back into fifth position. So that was extremely good. And today we had a bumper European episode with two matches against Castres Olympic. I've probably absolutely butchered that, but... There we go. But before we get into this episode, please do drop a like if you enjoyed today's content. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this series and are there any changes or adjustments you want to see me make. If you haven't already, please do move that subscribe button to keep up to date with the channel and to see all latest releases. But now, let's get into the episode. So we're going to just fire straight off into the matchup. There's not a lot of housekeeping there. Unfortunately, we do have some injured players in the squad, and I believe it is Ty Furlong. As always, I struggle to see the scroll bar over on this side. There we go. Yep, substitute number one, unfortunately. So we shall whack on Jake Walmore. And apart from that, if we just scroll down the fitness... Everything seems to be okay. Urine. Urine and Sheedy, Lilago, Rodradra, Morahan, Malin's all in the 80 somethings. But we want to start this episode strong. We're going to keep with the team. Away from home, a tricky test. We're just going to go for it with these boys, hopefully pick up the win in this match and then maybe in the next match against them we can make some changes and adjust a few things, give a few boys a rest. But for now, the away trip. We haven't worn our away kit much, have we, so far? Haven't really been able to show that off. Let's swing out the camera. Up the speed. And let's see how we get on. Castro's to kick off. We've got plenty of possession. A lovely line break. And who's that? That's Joe Marchant going over for the almost instant score within the first 10 minutes. He's playing extremely well since he signed for us. Oh, a lovely little line break there from Castro's. We've moved them back towards the halfway line, though. When we play with our first choice forwards, we just seem to pack an awful punch. And teams struggle to gain territory against us. Look at this now. We're pushing them back. They're not getting anywhere. Although there was a little line break there, unfortunately. So now they're on the 22. Have I spoken too soon? Got about five minutes left of the first half and they have scored. Luckily, they haven't managed to convert that try. We've turned it over in a promising position. The 40 minutes are up for the first half and Semi Rodradra has gone over for a try. It seems to be very rare that he scores, but we'll certainly take it. And again, we've won the ball back at the start of the second half in decent position. And we've gone over for another one, Andy Urin. So really stamping our authority early in this second half. We've opened up a nice big gap. They have won the ball there in our half, unfortunately. Kicked for a penalty. It's almost 60 minutes on the clock, so let's make some changes. The forwards are certainly tired today, so they've obviously been put through their paces. Um, da -da -da -da. Atwood is absolutely out on his feet. Dan Thomas will replace Nathan Hughes. Semi Radradra been playing while well. Malins is very very lots of work done by the players today it looks like lots of people struggling with fitness but it's good to see we've been able to sort of pull through with the victory anyway touch wood and not getting anywhere that more we've won this we've earned a scrum we've lost the scrum coming up to about 10 minutes left it doesn't look like we're going to lose this game but it'd be nice to finish on a high Coming up to five minutes left. The game's in the bag. Castro's with lots of possession, but it doesn't really matter. 
Kick to touch, 80 minutes are up. They have managed to maul over for a try. So they've got one score back there, but the game's over. Nalago with an impressive performance. Uh, who are we looking at here? March and 88. Sinclair 86, yeah. Nalago a 92 rating. Atwood 92 is probably his best game in a Bears shirt on this series. So that is good to see. And yeah, nice, nice victory over Castres. Seemed quite comfortable in the end. Cheers, Mark. Appreciate that. And really, if we head to the where are you competitions, the Challenge Cup, we've played three, won three. So you would have thought it would be pretty comfortable. There we are. One bonus point, three out of three. Bordeaux seem to be the main challenges to us. But yeah, things are looking good in Europe. And of course, we're going to get straight off to the next game now, which is a repeat performance. Another match against Castres Olympique. But yeah, things, you know, generally we're six episodes in now. And generally there has been a step up in performance this season, which I'm pleased with. Obviously, we have made a few signings, which was needed really. Injury to two Powell and Sinclair a week each. It's not the greatest, but perhaps we were going to rest them anyway. Um, so hopefully we can bring Ty Furlong on. We can. And then we've also got... Jake Woolmore to come on there. And then a change. We're going to bring... Healing onto the bench. As far as everybody else's fitness goes, I mean, Nalago probably does need a rest, doesn't he? So if I can see the scroll bar, ah. something they need to look into, I think, a bit of a better scroll bar there. Who should we bring on? Johan Lloyd is up to a 54 rated, on he goes. Didn't realise he had gone up that high. Sheedy at 10, perhaps could do with the rest. Tiff Eden, what are you up to, boy? He's 48. We could put Malins at fly half, couldn't we? And then bring Charles on as fullback. What, how, who else have we got who's struggling fitness wise? Urine. Randall recovered from his ban. He certainly has, so we'll get Randall in there. Semi, we'll give Semi a rest. And we will probably play the youngster, Robert Norman, I would say. Um, so yeah, a bit of change. Should we give someone else a run out at wing instead of Morahan? I think Purdy deserves a start, perhaps. And then instead of Marchant, I think we're going to give Piers O'Connor a run out at inside centre, and that will probably be it. Um, no, actually, we're going to give Hughesy a rest. He's put in plenty of minutes lately. Played Dan Thomas there. So then we just need to add some boys to the bench. Holmes. John Hawkins. Ayua. And probably Whistlecroft, the youngster. So there we go. That's what we're going to do today at home against Castres. And I think... There we go, the 3D match ending. I was going to go with a 2D one again. I do enjoy the old 2D one every now and then. And we have some snow here at Ashton Gate. So will that throw a spanner in the works, perhaps? So a sort of second string Bristol team should hopefully be strong enough to win this matchup. 
Can't really see what's going on. They've turned the ball over on the halfway line, so not the greatest of starts for us. But like always at the minute, uh, I was about to say they're struggling to break through, but they've gone over for a score already. Missed the conversion. So not the greatest of starts from us. Perhaps it was one step too far looking at resting all these players. You would think the squad should be strong enough to win, though. And as I say that, they've gone over for a second score. So extremely disappointing 20 minutes in. We've hardly had any possession. We've, had, we've got a yellow card. We've got a player in the sim bin now, and that is James Ryan. So, yep, it's gone terribly wrong. Terribly wrong so far. 30 minutes gone. Big defensive set needed before half time here. Just hopefully not let them score. Gone for a kick for some reason there. Simbin is over. Can we make something happen before half time? We've kicked the touch. We've won the line out. Can we get a bit of possession in territory? Shall I kick for goal? No, I'm not. I'm going to take the risk and kick for touch. Can we make something happen here? Where's the mall? Here we go. Here's the mall. Get in. That proved a good decision. A poor kick there. Unfortunately. Yeah, the first half is up. We've managed to get ourselves back within a converted score. And we've won the ball back there. Lovely. We're in another, another good position here. Not a lot happening, unfortunately. We need a bit of magic. Nice breakthrough there from Charles. Game in some territory. Oh, we've broken through. We're on the 22. Substitutes are soon coming. There we go. We're in. Randall back in the team and back scoring. We've converted the try as well, so we're all level. And it's probably time to look at some subs. Piers O'Connor. Not looking great there. 33. Anyone else ridiculously low? Dan Thomas at 8. Chris Fui's going to come on there. We didn't put Urin on the bench, did we? What a strange decision. That will probably be it for now, I think, because obviously these boys are the second string. Oh, ho, ho! 20 minutes to go. We've got a kick for touch. See what we can do on the 22. Still got the ball. No, oh, they've got an injury. I'm not sure what's happening here. We've still got the ball. Seven phases in. And here we go. We, I mean, we've got a kick for goal, haven't we? We've got a kick for goal and go three points to the good. There's only 10 minutes left. So it's all about keeping possession. We didn't keep possession very well at the start of the first half. We've knocked it on, Brian Byrne, but we've won the scrum and earned a penalty, which is key. Kick into touch now. Just keep possession. Coming up to five minutes left. Keep the ball. See if we can do anything. And if not, just see it out. Keeping possession well at the minute. Here we go, we're in, and Randall wraps up the victory, you would say. Ten points to the good now. A great performance from this second string Bristol Bears team. And we have got the win, Randall's first match back. Man of the match, scoring tries, what a player. Ty Furlong, 89, played well. Randall and Malins as the backs, both 95. 92, Dan Thomas played well and Piers O'Connor as well back into the team. 89, a 22 points to 12 victory. So that is four out of four in the Challenge Cup. So looking extremely good. Not sure why I've gone to the job market there. We've got a home win. James Ryan has been banned for 12 days, a high tackle. And yeah. So far, so good in the Challenge Cup. We haven't put a foot wrong, and we managed to rest several players in that game, which is key. So hopefully they'll come back fresh 
for the next matchup, which is against the Sail Sharks in the Premiership. So the next episode, we'll have two Premiership games, Sail away and Leicester at home. And I'll just wait for this processing to finish so that we can have a little look at the league and see where Sale and Leicester are. I can just about see Leicester there are in fifth place and Sale are in third. So two big, big games. If we can come through them with victories and we'll be right in amongst the mix. Very, very good position to be in, you would hope. The Colts have beaten Sale. The Academy have beaten Sale. So can we make it a clean sweep across the Bristol Bears system? Tune in to the next episode to find out. Please do drop a like if you have enjoyed today's European episode of the Rugby Union Team Manager 3 series. Leave a comment down below, I get back to all of them. Give me your tips and advice and who do you want to see playing for the Bears. If you haven't already, please do move that subscribe button to keep up to date with the channel. And as always, I shall see you in the virtual scrum. Yeah.